For this example on using the one sample t-test and conducting the analysis on R, we want to know does the population mean have a reading score that differs from 100? We would state the null hypothesis as mu equals 100 and the alternative as mu does not equal 100. First I need to import the data into R. I do that by using the read.csv function. And after importing, I'm going to use the head function to check that the import went OK. And this is showing me the first few rows of data and all the columns of data I had in the file. For this analysis, I'm going to use the variable called read score. The one sample t-test with a two-sided alternative is executed by using the t.test function x is going to equal to my dependent variable, which is going to be x dollar sign read score. And I need to give it the value specified by the null, which was that mu equals 100. I run the analysis and the output is shown in the console. The first line of the output tells me that I did indeed run a one sample t-test. And that's important because the same function can be used to do a one sample t-test, an independent samples t-test, or a dependent samples t-test. And it's important to verify that you ran the correct test. The line that begins with data tells me that my dependent variable was the reading score, and that's what I wanted, so that's good. Next, you have the observed value of the test statistic and that is that t equals 0 0.74073. It had 39 degrees of freedom and a p-value of 0.4633. To make a decision about the null hypothesis, we compare the p-value to our significance level. If we used a significance level of 0 0.05, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case because the p-value is much larger than 0 0.05. To say it again, the p-value for this test statistic is 0.4633. That is greater than the significance level. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Just beneath the row that shows the test statistic, it shows the alternative hypothesis that we used. And we can see that the alternative hypothesis was that the true mean is not equal to 100. That tells us that we did indeed conduct a, a two-tailed or a non-directional test. The next piece of information shows the 95% confidence interval for the population mean. We see that with 95% confidence, the population mean is between 96.69 and 107.13. The value 100 is in that interval, and that's why we failed to reject the null hypothesis. The remaining bit of output is not that important for a one sample t-test. All it is showing you is the sample mean. That piece of information is very important when we do the independent samples and the dependent samples t-test. But for now, we will just ignore it um, when interpreting the output.